Hey, good to be with you today. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 7. We're right in the middle of a sentence, so just hang with me on this. Paul says, So that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end. This is big right here. That you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, you know, Paul is just like he always does. You know, he starts out his epistles typically with... um, a brief introduction, and then he jumps right into his gratitude for what God was doing in those churches. Churches um, oftentimes that he planted, and Paul did plant this church. If you want some background information on the planting of Corinth, I would encourage you to read Acts chapter 18. In fact, do that right after this devotion. It's not long, but it'll give you a picture of what it was like when Paul rolled into Corinth and preached the gospel, you know, the very inception of this church. And so, you know, Paul's talking about his prayer life. Paul was always praying for the churches that he planted. He was thankful. Um, He identified things that he was grateful for. And then he also mentioned things that he had been consistently praying for. And one thing that he had been praying for for this church was that they would come short in no gift. That all of the gifts, and I, I do think that Paul's talking not just in a general sense, but he's talking about spiritual gifts that God has given, um, and that becomes relevant later on in this epistle. Um, he's talking about the spiritual gifts, and his prayer all along for this church at Corinth was that all of the spiritual gifts that you know are available to us uh, through the work of the Holy Spirit would be experienced in this this congregation, and you know God had answered that prayer like in a pretty amazing way. Uh, this church was a, a mightily gifted church. You know, uh, it's going to be evident that there were gifts of prophecy and gifts of tongues and gift, the gift of interpretation of tongues and teaching uh, and so many, so many other things. And, and yet, what ends up happening, we're going to see, is that the very blessings that God had given to this church had become a source of division. The very blessings that God had given to this church had become a source of division, that they actually were beginning to take personal pride in how God had gifted them, and it was, it was creating conflict in the church, and it was disrupting the general assembly, the gathering of God's people, to such an extent that the Apostle Paul writes this letter to correct them. And we're going to see some really strong corrections from Paul uh, in this letter. In fact, it wasn't just the issue of gifts. There was, there was a lot happening in this church um, that was not pleasing to God. And so I think there are seven specific things that the Apostle Paul points out um, in an effort to correct this church that was really out of order. You know, when you think of churches uh, in this New Testament era, um, and you're, you're thinking of churches that were kind of messed up and super dysfunctional, Corinth like sits right at the top. I mean, it was a, it was a church with issues. Um, but what I love is this, as Paul is talking about, hey, I've been praying for you that you would be blessed. Um, and God's answered that prayer. There's a problem. Your blessings have become a point of contention among you because you've mishandled the blessings Church, when God blesses us, let's make sure we don't begin to mishandle his blessings. Let's not idolize or deify the gifts that God gives us. Let's not um, puff ourselves up or become self-centered or self-absorbed with the spiritual gifts that God gives us in a way where we look down on other people around us. Um, Let's make sure that we use the gifts for the edification of the body. And, And he says here, Um, All of these things are purpose so that there's an anticipation and that you're prepared for the coming, the revelation of Christ, and that you would be able to be presented blameless. Now, this is the thing for me that I love about the Apostle Paul. Before he deals with all the stuff that's wrong in this church, before, I mean, if it was me, I probably would launch right into, all right, I got five points to make. This is where you're messed up. Let's clean this business up and let's get on with the mission. Paul starts off with, hey, you know, God's faithful. He's faithful. Uh, there's, there are issues, and I'm going to deal with these issues because this letter was a response to a letter that came from Corinth. Uh, but before he does that, he's like, you know, God, God's faithful in your life, and he's going to present you blameless. Clearly, you know, you're not perfect, and you, you're, you're pretty messed up, and there's some things that God needs to do in your life. But this is the power of the message of the gospel, that one day when you stand before him, you will be presented without 
blame. Why is that the case? Because you've been forgiven of your sins and God is faithful. So I wanna encourage you today. There's two, two solid things here. One is, one is this. We don't ever wanna take the blessings of God and misuse them and be in a place where they become a point of contention or we're walking in sin because of personal self-exaltation. Um, there's the areas of dysfunction in our lives need to be cleaned up and the Holy Spirit will convict us in those areas. And, you know, we take those steps to respond in repentance to the conviction of God's Spirit with total confidence that God's faithful. You know, we don't need to be afraid or just emotionally hurt when the Spirit of God convicts us. We can receive it because we know in the end we're going to stand before Christ we're going to stand blameless before him because that is the power of his blood. He's able. He is able to present us in that way because he's the one who's done the work. Let's walk in that today. Let's, if there are areas in our lives where the Lord's just, man, fine-tuning and making corrections, let's yield to it and say yes because ultimately he's conforming us into the image of his son. And Father, we thank you today for this. We, we're, we're grateful, God, that we don't have to be afraid of the conviction of your spirit. We don't have to hide stuff. We don't have to be filled with shame. Uh, we know you're doing the work and you're gonna be faithful to complete the work until the day of Christ. And so have your way with us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good day.